Hey guys, Hecons here with another World of Warcraft Goldmaking Guide. Today we're going to be taking a look at our second profession in the 8.3 Goldmaking series. That profession is Inscription. It is by far my favorite for goldmaking. It's very easy to set up across multiple realms, and upkeep on it is very minimal once you have it set up. Between 8.0 and 8.2, on one of my main realms I had 35.2 million, and a little bit over 28 million in sales, just from the Darkmoon deck trinkets. That's roughly 63 million gold in sales between those two bankers. And my conservative estimation is that at least half of that was profit. However, the actual number I think is closer to an 80 or 90% profit margin. I do also do this on multiple realms, since it's so easy to scale. So I probably made a couple hundred million just from these trinkets. You can see the inscription is a very solid earner, and I'd recommend having at least one of these on your realms for gold making. Now that we've talked a little bit about the earnings potential, Let's talk about the different ways we can make gold with Inscription 8.3. The first is our Cash Cow, which are the Compendiums or the item level 400 trinkets that they added in 8.2. These aren't as profitable as they once were, but they did take the RNG out of crafting these like we had with the 8.0 Dark Moon trinkets. This means that there's much lower barrier to entry, and it's much easier to make gold crafting these. Calculating the profit margin on these is pretty straightforward. We need a total of 50 Light Parchment, 45 Maroon Ink, 25 Ultramarine Ink, and 2 Expulsum. We talked about how to get cheap Expulsum in the last video using Tidespray Linen Bracers. On most of my realms, each Expulsum costs around 120 gold worth of linen. The 50 Light Parchment comes from the vendor for 30 copper. The Ultramarine Ink or Pigment can be purchased for 2-3 to three gold on average on most realms. And for me, the cost is negligible since they are a byproduct for another very profitable inscription craft, which we'll talk about next. So I don't factor in the cost of the ultramarine ink in my calculation. And lastly, we just need to know how much the 45 maroon ink costs. On average, you'll need to mill around 75 to 80 xenanthid, um, so it's very easy to calculate that. The next crafts to look at are war scrolls. These require 8 crimson ink each to craft, so you'll want to pick up the cheapest of the older BFA herbs and mill those. You'll also get an abundance of ultramarine and veridescent and pigments from milling the old herbs, and we'll talk about what you can do with those next. On average on my realms, each of these war scrolls sell for 150 to 500 gold each, and usually have a better than 50% profit margin. Turning the pigment into ink can be time consuming however, so if you have an extra account, you should consider ink crafting on that while you play on your main. A lot of players running Mythic Plus and smaller raid groups do purchase these if they are missing the appropriate buffs, so these are almost always selling for me. For milling the older BFA herbs, you're going to end up with Ultramarine Pigment, Crimson Pigment, as well as Veridescent Pigment. I'd recommend turning the Crimson Pigment into Crimson Ink, and turning those into War Scrolls like we discussed previously. And then with the Ultramarine Pigment and the Veridescent Pigment, you can turn those into inks as well. And then I'd recommend turning those into these Etch Vessels. You can see at rank 3, the Sinister Combatant's Etch Vessel takes 50 Light Parchment, uh, 40 Ultramarine Ink, as well as 10 Veridescent Ink. You also need one Expulsum for each one. So that can be time consuming, um, turning everything into ink, and then getting Expulsum on your Scribe. However, you can disenchant these on an Enchanter, um, get Veil Crystals, and turn those into Enchants, which can be quite profitable. So if you're ending up with a bunch of the blue and green inks, uh, this is what I would recommend crafting. Once you get the auction house stock with some of the BFA crafts like compendiums and war scrolls, I recommend taking a look at glyphs, specifically the recipes from Legion. Um, I am getting set up on this realm, so I don't have very many recipes. However, you can see some of these sell for like 5k, uh, 6k for that one, 5.2k. And then the recipe I just picked up sells for 5.6k. The Goblin anti grav Flare, which you get from the Engineering Vendor for 28 gold. I am still missing quite a few. Um, some of these are World Drops, some of them are behind uh, like Rep and like Dungeon Drops, so... Quite a few recipes to farm, but it is definitely worth your time. You can see some of them sell for like 6k, 7k and the materials are very cheap to get. Remember that there's six different legion herbs that you can mill. Eighth Roll, Foxflower, Dreamleaf, Starlight Rose, Pyrrhon and Felwort. 
and each of them do have a different mill rate. So depending on what you mill, you'll get different amounts of sallow pigment as well as rosea pigment. If you're after more of the rosea pigment, I believe the dreamleaf is still the best. And if you're after sallow, you want to go for the felwort. Uh, the herbs on this realm are quite expensive. I did already buy out the cheap ones earlier today, so you can see most of these are 15 gold or more. And I definitely would not recommend buying your legion herbs this expensive. Um, on some realms, you can pick them up for 5 gold or less. And yeah, on the low pops, you may have to settle for like 10 gold or less, but um, definitely wouldn't buy any at 15. If the herbs do get too expensive, if remember that there is a blood trader. Um, so you can get the shoulder enchants. Um, you can even put them on heirlooms and like farm them on ult. And you can trade the blood of Sagarius for herbs as well. So that's a really good alternative if the herbs get too expensive or there aren't enough on your realm. Once you get the auction house stocked with some of the Legion glyphs and you're sitting on a bunch of roseate pigment as well as sal pigment, remember that we do have an ink trader in the new Dalaran. And you can trade in one uh, roseate pigment for any of the older inks, which you can use to craft some of the old world glyphs as well as recipes. Uh, definitely a good resource, especially if you can get your legion herbs for really cheap. Uh, mill those uh, for the pigment and then trade in the pigment for some of these inks. Now that we've talked a little bit about the ways that we can make gold with inscription and 8.3, let's see it in practice and take a look at a few mailboxes. Did save my mail from the past month or so on this realm. You can see that all these are glyph sales or compendium sales. I do also sell war scrolls on this realm, but I list those on another banker, so they won't be shown here. Uh, 225k mailbox. Quite happy about that. Almost enough to buy two WoW tokens. You can see some really solid glyph sales. Fell Touch Shard selling for 14.2k. Uh, Shaivara selling for 43 uh, floating shards for 6.6. .6. Some nice compendium sales. Storms for 5.2. 9.5k for the Sundering. And then the Swirling Tides and Mystical Bulwark selling for around 7.6k each. Uh, Fell Wings 5.7k for that glyph. Pretty nice sale. And then Crimson Cell and Feral Chameleon selling for 1.3 and 1.6. Bunch more compendium sales, a uh, few storms at 5.2k, a few sundering at 7.6, uh, two more storms at 2.3, and two swirling tides at 2.3 as well. Those are actually quite low, not sure what happened here. Glyph of Ember Shard selling for 9.5k, really nice sale. Sell on two library servings at 9.5. The Goblin anti grav Flare, which I mentioned earlier, sold one of those on this realm for 4.9k. So definitely worth getting those recipes and crafting the glyphs to throw up in the auction house. Um, Voidlord, one of my favorite glyphs. Didn't mention it a couple times in the Legion guides. Uh, back then I was selling those for like 15k, very consistently, so... Um, 4k isn't as much, but still profitable, so definitely worth getting that. I believe that recipe comes from the underbelly. You have to farm 100 of the currency and trade that in to get the recipe. But it's pretty easy to do, and yeah, it'll probably take you like 10 or 15 minutes. And once you do it, you'll have the recipe. Won't have to like farm it again. So it's definitely worth it. Um, Crimson Shell, sold two of those at 2.7, not too bad. Uh, Crackling Crate Lightning, sold one of those for 1.6. Two Spectral Raptors at 3k, and then I did sell three more Lavish Servings at 14.2. Uh, so what is that, like 4.75 after the Auction House cut for each of those? Did mention them in the 0 to 1 million gold challenge. I think in episode 3 or episode 4, I managed to get the recipe off the auction house uh, on my challenge realm for really cheap. 
uh, learned it on my scribe and started selling those glyphs on the auction house. Um, I think my first sale was like 15k, so. Uh, for one glyph, so. This was for three glyphs, and yeah, I got roughly a third of my first sale on the challenge realm, so. Still definitely a good seller if you can get the recipe off the auction house or farm it yourself. I think you do need a mage that's a scribe to get the recipe. So um, if you do have a mage that doesn't have any professions picked up, definitely get the inscription recipe. Uh, try to get this recipe and start crafting these to throw up in the auction house. And then lastly, a couple more compendium sales, 4.7 for the mystical bulwark and two senderings at 7.1. Pretty happy with this mailbox. Let's hop realms and take a look at another mailbox. On this realm I have 144.2k in sales to collect from the last month or so. Pretty decent amount since 144 is enough to pay for a WoW token. And you can see there's a big gap in sales. A uh, three week gap where I didn't like relist so I uh, could have made way more gold but I'm uh, still happy with the amount that I made in the past month. As we talked about, I am selling glyphs, as well as trinkets, the item level 400 highborn compendiums. I did also sell one of the older ones. Um, where's that sale? Oh, Darkman Deck Squall 7.6k. Had some of the older ones left over. Um, I believe they're item level 355. So I threw those up on the auction house and managed to sell one, looks like, four days ago. Uh, contracts are really good as well. You can see the Voldoon ones selling for almost 2k each. I think a lot of people are still trying to grind out the rep for unlocking the uh, Volpira, so those contracts need to be priced a lot higher than the other ones. Uh, the other ones still sell for a decent amount. You can see the Tortellan ones selling for 1.1k per stack of two, so like 550 each. Uh, more glyph sales. War Scrolls are really good as well. Um, a lot of people pushing Mythic Plus. Sometimes raids, if they don't have the right comp, um, they'll pick up some War Scrolls, so they'll have the buff. Um, so like 300 gold each, it looks like, around on this realm. Um, sometimes they go up to like 500 or even like 1,000 gold on some realms, so... Definitely take a look on your realm, and if it looks profitable, uh, turn the Red Inks, the Crimson Inks, into... The world scrolls and then you do also need some of the red inks for contracts so if those look profitable as well um, you should be crafting a mix of those contracts and war scrolls and then with the expulsum and maroon ink you should be crafting highborn compendiums you can see on this realm they're selling for almost 10k really good amount um i think on most of my other realms they're around half of that now so uh, pretty nice profit with inscription on this realm. As I said, there was a big gap where I didn't relist, so I could have made a lot more, but happy with the 144 that I made in the last month. That's going to be it for this guide. Inscription is one of those professions that is always consistent and bringing in a ton of gold across all of my realms where I have scribes. It's very easy to set up and should be solid in Shadowlands, so you should definitely have at least one of these on your realms. As always, thank you for watching. And a huge shout out to my supporters on Patreon as well. Thank you Lionel, Nadim aka Stormy, and Rajesh. Happy reset day, and good luck with your gold making. I hope you all have a great week, and I will catch you all in the next video. Late.